What's up guys? Got another video for you today and we're gonna go ahead and retouch on dagger strokes and get you guys from going from some nice broad dagger strokes to getting you guys into some nice fine stuff. Stick along for the Alright, what's up guys? So I'm just gonna run you guys through a quick little process and a little um exercise you guys can do at home um, and we're gonna do today's exercise on shop towels again I'll put a link to everything that I'm gonna use today down below just if you need to get your hands on it it'll be really easy to find just right there down below we're gonna use some 3m super 77 spray adhesive we're gonna just give this a quick little quick little spray and that should be enough to just stick this up here and again, this is just a practice. This is just some exercise uh, to get your finger control down as well, uh, or more importantly, to try to master the dagger stroke. So you guys have heard me talk a lot about the dagger stroke and how important it is uh, for freehand artwork and just using an airbrush as a tool in general. Um, so I'm gonna go through a couple exercises and, and show you First of all, what is a dagger stroke? How do you achieve a dagger stroke? And how do you end up perfecting the dagger stroke so that you can take that, uh, what you've learned here, and use that for your other artworks or your more masterpiece type stuff. So anyway, let's get started up on here. <clears throat> all right guys, so I'm just gonna use Iwata Revolution for today. Um, I know it's an airbrush that a lot of you have or, or uh, have your eyes on. And we're going to use a little bit of Wicked Black and a little bit of a reducer. So we're going to throw some Wicked Black in here and we're going to reduce it down about 10 to 15%. We really don't need to worry too much about the reduction as again this is just an exercise and uh, if the reduction is not quite perfect you can mess with the air pressure just a little bit. You know, maybe you could adjust it up or down, and that should give you a decent spray. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up really good. Make sure our air hole, our vent hole at the top of the airbrush is nice and clear. Always make sure that's nice and clear. All right, so once we have our paint mixed up, we wanna make sure we get good spray. All right, I always test off first. <clears throat> Now first, I'm going to just start by showing you a dagger stroke. And this is going to be a really big, really broad dagger stroke uh, so that you get the basic idea of what I'm saying. So a dagger stroke is a line or a stroke uh, that goes from thick to thin or thin to thick. Either way works. Um, more importantly is that you need to learn both ways. right? So you can start from thin to thick. I, in the past, have learned it from thick to thin, thick to thin, and then from there I progressed from thin to thick. You could do it the other way, there's not you know, any other way, but tip for today, we're just gonna start off the way that I did it. So I'm gonna do a stroke. We're gonna start off kind of far away, and as we go down, we're gonna get closer. So it's, it's kind of a two-step thing, and at the same time, we're gonna pull back on our trigger all the way at the top, and as we go down, we're going to slightly release the trigger forward until we come to a nice clean point. Something like so. Nice and gradual line. It comes up directly to a nice fine point. Now I, I like working with the tip off. If you're a beginner, if you're just starting with this, I recommend leaving the, the, the needle protect on or the fan cap on so that you don't go and stab your needle on your surface. So that is a dagger stroke, right? Now, I've seen a lot of people where they get them kind of squiggly or they don't really end at a nice fine point. They kind of just trail off. I've seen people also where they don't get close, right? They, they kind of just, they do something like this and that, you know, that's not the same as a dagger stroke. You know, you have to, have to, Get closer, so you start from far away, you get closer. Now if it's a little crooked, it's okay. 
It's more important to learn about the distance. Right? So you want something really nice, really fine. And as you progress, maybe you'll start moving a little faster, which will make them just a little bit straighter. Now, one thing I like to tell you guys and to teach you guys is to not let go of the air. So if you've seen me do all of those, I didn't let go of the air for any of them. So it's all about learning how to control your finger and your hand. So you want to practice them, you know, big, nice, long ones. You could do nice, short strokes. And then once you've kind of got them, you know, going down, maybe you do them going up. And you see how they come to a nice, fine point. Now, if you kind of go back and you look at that, you'll see that I'm doing kind of a circular motion as I'm going from one to the other. Don't get ahead of yourself. Always just try to get one at a time. Just because you see me do them so quick does not mean you're going to get the same um, result right away as, as I am. But it's all practice. Obviously, I'm the one teaching you, so I have lots of practice in this. I see a lot of people also try to get ahead of themselves. And just because they do a one semi-decent stroke, they believe they've kind of conquered it. But no, if you truly want to master the dagger stroke, right, you got to practice them going in all directions. you got to make sure they're always nice and fine to a point. And then from there, you got to practice uh, what I call a double dagger, um, which is two dagger strokes going from thick to thin and back to thin again, back to thick again on the other end, right? So you practice some of these. And this is what I like to do to kind of warm up my hand. If I'm feeling like a little rusty or if I get a new airbrush that I'm not so familiar with, uh, kind of before I start playing around with it, I always kind of go through, make sure I, you know, kind of calibrate my finger to the way the needle and the stroke is on the, on the nozzle here. Because different airbrushes will have a different rake on the needle. So their aggressiveness on how much paint will come out and how much will flow through will vary. Not only does it matter, you know, a 0.3 or a 0.5, that's the size of the outlet of the hole but also the rake of the needle. A lot of people don't take that into consideration. So you could have a 0.5 millimeter airbrush, but if the rake of the needle comes to a really fine point, it will actually spray probably better than a 0.18 or 0.2. You, you'll be you'll have to work your finger just a really more slightly, right? But it'll actually be able to produce the same fine lines that you could get with other airbrushes. So. A lot of airbrushes though, like this at Water Revolution, have a more aggressive rake. And what that allows is for you to be able to not have to pull back so the trigger action doesn't have to be so far. And it allows you to spray thicker paint. So on this it has a 0.5 millimeter needle, but with a th uh, more aggressive rake, it allows paint to flow through a little bit faster. So you gotta take this all into consideration depending on what airbrush you're using and what you're doing. Um, you may need to reduce the paint, maybe you'll need to up the pressure a little bit. And that's why I chose the Revolution, so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Right now I'm using about 30 PSI. I only reduced the paint about 10, 10%. It was just a few little drips in there of reducer, nothing crazy. And this is kind of what we're doing, right? We're just practicing our thick to thins, thick to thins. And, and yeah. Now once you feel like you're comfortable, you, you could do them going anyway, you could go on from thick to thin and back to thick again, or you could do them from, from thin, you know, to thick. Right? And these all look great, right? If this is how yours look starting off, 
you're doing fantastic. But this is where the mastery part comes in, right? So you want to make sure first off your needle is nice and cleaned off because even though this will help you in general learning how to use the tool and how to shade and, and flow and fill colors in, do some lines, this is good for all of that. If you want to master your airbrush and you want to achieve um, the great, you know, fine details, this next exercise will take you to that next level. All right, so now I've zoomed you in a little bit. And now we've done them big, we've done them kind of medium size, you've already practiced them going different ways, you've done them left to right, right to left, all the way in circles. You've kind of got your dagger stroke, you've got the basic idea down, right? Now we talk about mastering the dagger stroke. And usually it's going to vary airbrush by airbrush, obviously, um, but most airbrushes will have a finer rake that you could kind of go in there. And you want to use just the very tip, just the very end of the opening. So you're going to get in really close. And then as you go down, and this is why I like working with the fan cap off, because you really need that needle tip to almost touch or even touch um, to get the finest points. You see, these dagger strokes are a lot finer than these. And this is called a precision dagger stroke. So something that I would call more detailed, more precise, a precision dagger stroke. A lot of people can do these. Then we move on to these. And again, you want to get good at doing them without removing the air without moving your finger and just kind of move along with the movement and once you've got it down you'll kind of understand and it's really all about programming your hand your fingers your eyes your you know everything to move together in conjunction so that you could create the line that you want right because then you could use this to create different effects but again you just want to get and use the finest points of the needle the smallest part of the opening. And this is when you'll see me See this, I kind of have some markings here on my fingers where I'm constantly doing this. Or you'll see me get a napkin and do this all the time on stream or a rag um, and you'll see me constantly wiping it off. And that's because I'm trying to use the finest point of the tip, right? So if there's any kind of paint stuck onto your needle, it will reflect onto these dagger strokes. Your dots won't be dots, maybe they'll be little squares, little triangles, they'll be little you know rectangles or something and you really want to make sure it comes a dot so that you could create the fine line at the end right so that's what we're achieving here and this is what I want to emphasize to you guys is that I know a lot of you guys have mastered this you know just doing dagger strokes thick to thin but then if you really want to get into a precision mat dagger stroke you really got to know to stay in close and just use that very tip. And you'll see me again. I'm starting off kind of not a whole lot far away, but I'm a little bit farther away. And as I move sideways like this, I'm moving my finger forward. And then at the same time, I'm getting closer so all three things need to happen at once and that is dagger stroke mastery now obviously you could take this and do lots of variations right if you're gonna do little ease Practice your thick to thin.
And once you really got it down, you can really move a little bit faster once you kind of understand what you're doing. And there you go, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. These are all dagger strokes. Everything you use within the airbrush, if you're, whether you're trying to do small little dots or thick shading, you know, kind of coming around, this all derives from doing these. So the more precise and more fine that you can do your dagger strokes, the more precise and more fine that your artwork will become. And I hope that helps you guys out. <clears throat> As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to see more, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later, everybody.